We start chapter 9 by looking at an alternate system of plotting points in the plane, called polar coordinates. These coordinates are based on circles and angles instead of x and y coordinates. In this video, we'll develop polar coordinates, convert between rectangular and polar coordinates and equations. Precalculus Online starts now. Section 9.1 is about polar coordinates. So up until now, you've probably only used rectangular coordinates. Rectangular coordinates is the system that is based on two axes, x and a y, that form a right angle and intersect at a point called the origin. And then the points in the, x, in the rectangular coordinate system are in the form of x comma y, where you go over either left or right x, and then up or down y units. Today, we'll be looking at the polar coordinate system, which is based on a point, an array, and then there's an angle that's produced, and then a certain distance away from that center point. And of course, these things have uh, terminology and, and names for them. So let's go ahead and get started. So first uh, topic is plotting polar coin, uh, polar coordinates. That center point is called the pole. So the pole is the center of the polar grid. And that corresponds to the origin if we're in rectangular coordinates. The polar axis is the ray from the pole at zero degrees. So you sort of have to set a standard for where you're going to start measuring the angle in a polar a coordinate system, and that is the polar axis, which is at zero degrees. Now in the rectangular system, this is equivalent to the positive x-axis. And it's also the ray that we use to start measuring angles in the rectangular system uh, that were standard position angles. So it's just that ray that goes out to the right. And then polar coordinates are points in the form r comma theta, where r is the distance from the pole, theta is the angle in standard position. using the polar axis as zero degrees. So the r is the distance from the pole, and the theta is the angle in standard position around the polar coordinate system. The r is used because it is really a radius, so that's why they use r for that. So let's look at example number one. Uh, point A is 3, 120 degrees. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to go out three units from the pole. So we're going to go uh, 1, 2, 3. And so we're going to be somewhere along this circle. Now I'm drawing this because I can't point to, you, to the pieces on the graph, so I'm drawing it for you here. I would probably not draw this uh, circle for you if we were doing this in person. Uh, but, but you're going to go out three units, and so that's going to create that circle at radius three. And then you're going to go around to 120 degrees. And that's this line here. So the 
point that we want here is point A, radius of 3, 120 degrees. Uh, we can do this in radians. Point B is 2, comma, pi over 6. So 2 would be this circle here. And then pi over 6 is that angle. So this is point B in the polar grid. Point C is 4, comma, negative 90. So let me go 4, and then negative 90 degrees would be down to here, this point here. So that's point C. D is negative 3, comma, 45 degrees. So if I start and draw the circle 3 and go up to 45 degrees, it is not going to be this point here. The negative radius indicates that you need to travel back through the pole to the opposite point along the same line. So this is point D down here. So recapping, we went up to 45 degrees and instead of going to where the 3 was, we went backwards to where, uh, through the pole to where 3 is on the other side. E is a combination of both a negative radius and a negative angle. So negative 5 comma negative 7 pi over 6. So if I do negative pi, uh, negative 7 pi over 6, that would be this angle here. But then I need to do negative 5, so I'm going to travel back through and get to that point there. And that's point E. And then lastly, F is 0, 80 degrees. Since the radius is 0, it doesn't matter what the angle is. This is one of the representations of the pole. Example 2. Find the polar coordinates for P in three different ways. Uh, with R greater than 0 and the angle between 0 and 2 pi is our first one. So that's just sort of our standard way of writing it. So first, what is the radius? 1, 2, 3, 4. And then, uh, what angle is that at? That is at 5 pi over 6. And that's sort of the standard way of writing it. But uh, unlike the rectangular coordinate system, you can actually use different numbers in the polar coordinate system to represent the same point in the plane. As we'll see with part B, write the point with radius negative, but the circle still in the first rotation. So if I was going to use a negative radius, that means I would somehow have to start down here at this point right here. So the negative 4 is going to take this point and project it back through the pole to this point here. And then the question is, what angle is that? So the angle here that we're looking at is 11 pi over 6. Lastly, we need a radius that's positive and in one rotation going backwards. So a positive radius, that's going to be 4. And then if I go backwards, then this would have to be negative 7 pi over 6. Let's look at conversion polar coordinates to and from the rectangular coordinate system. Now the way to master this particular topic is to memorize this diagram. What this diagram does is it incorporates all facets of polar and rectangular coordinates. So first off, 
this point here is going to be point x comma y in the rectangular coordinate system. If so, that means the horizontal component here is x, the vertical component is y, and we have a radius of r, just like we did in chapter 6. But then we also have this angle here of theta, and so the point x comma y in rectangular coordinates can also be thought of as r comma theta in polar coordinates. And now the question is, what equations uh, turn these back and forth from each other? So if I have polar coordinates and I want to turn them into rectangular coordinates, having polar coordinates means I've been given the r and the theta, and I want to produce the x and the y. So we must have x is equal to something and y is equal to something. And then this comes straight from our definitions of sine and cosine. The cosine of theta from this picture would be x over r. So if I solve for x and I cross multiply the r to the other sign, I get r is equal to cosine theta. So x is equal to r cosine theta y is equal to, in a similar fashion, r times the sine of theta. So you do need to memorize these. As long as you can remember the picture, you can produce these. And then the opposite way, starting with rectangular information and deriving the polar information. So in other words, you've been given x and y, and you want to produce the r and the theta. So based on this picture, if you're given x and y, you can use the Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. And in order to produce the theta based on x and y, the easiest way to do it is to use tangent. So tangent of theta is equal to y over x. Now, the trick here, and you do need to memorize these, is that neither of these produce the r or the theta. The r, you have to take the square root. That's fine, no problem. Depending on what angle you're going to use, the R should probably be positive. But, as we said and mentioned before, it could be negative. You just have to adjust the angle appropriately. The tangent of theta is equal to Y over X. This one is going to take some thinking. Uh, it depends on where the X, Y coordinate is in the plane. If it's in a different quadrant than the first and the fourth quadrants, then you're going to have to uh, manipulate the angle a little bit. Let's take a look at some examples. Example 3. Convert the polar coordinates 4, comma, pi over 3 to the rectangular coordinates. So I'll just use the formula. x is equal to r cosine of theta is 4 times the cosine of pi over 3. The cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. So the x is equal to 2. And for the y, y is equal to r sine theta. So that's 4 times the sine of pi over 3, which is 4 times the square root of 3 over 2, which is 2 root 3. So now we have the x and the y, and this rectangular point is 2 comma 2 root 3. In example four, convert the rectangular coordinates eight comma negative eight to polar coordinates. So I'm given the x and the y, and I want to convert this to r and theta. So first, let's use the Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So we'll have eight squared plus negative eight squared is equal to r squared. Eight squared is 64. And 64 plus 64 is 128. It's equal to r squared. So r is equal to 8 root 2. Next, let's set up the equation for theta. So the tangent of theta is equal to y over x, which is equal to negative 8 over 8, which is negative 1. 
I need to know which quadrant this particular point is going to lie in. Because it is 8 comma negative 8, it is in the fourth quadrant. And we're not strictly using arctangent to do this. We're solving the equation. So we can use angles that are between 0 and 2 pi. And so I'm going to use this large angle instead of the small angle. Could you use the small negative angle? Yes, sure, no problem. But uh, a lot of times we just do this to make it easy on ourselves. And so we know that that angle that produces a, a tangent of negative 1 is 7 pi over 4. So the polar coordinate for this is 8 root 2, comma 7 pi over 4. Next, example 5, convert the rectangular coordinates negative 1 and root 3 to polar coordinates. So again, we'll use x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. Negative 1 squared plus root 3 squared is equal to r squared. So 1 plus 3 is equal to r squared. So 4 is equal to r squared and r is equal to 2. Next, let's find the angle. So the tangent of theta is equal to the negative square root of 3 over 1. And we need to figure out which quadrant this would be in. So this is going to be over negative 1 and then up root 3. So it's going to be this angle here. And the angle that produces that is 2 pi over 3. So the polar point here is 2 comma 2 pi over 3. Example 6. Transform the equation r equals 12 sine of theta from polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. So there's a trick to doing this. So we'll start off with the equation. r is equal to 12 sine of theta. Multiply both sides by r. So we, on the left, we get r squared. On the right, we get 12 r sine theta. Then we make a conversion from polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. We know that r squared is equivalent to x squared plus y squared by the Pythagorean theorem. And we know that r sine theta is our formula for y. So we get x squared plus y squared is equal to 12y. Then we can continue, move the 12y to the left side. and get x squared plus y squared minus 12y equals 0. Next, we can complete the square on the y's. So we get x squared plus y squared minus 12y plus blank is equal to 0 plus blank. And remember that you have to complete the square, so you take half of the 12, that's equal to 6, and then square that. 6 squared is equal to 36. And you add 36 to both sides. So the equation becomes x squared plus factor y squared minus 12y plus 36 down to y minus 6 squared, and that's equal to 36. Recall from college algebra that this is a circle. The center of the circle is 0, 6, and it has a radius of 6.
Example 7. Transform the equation x, y equals 1 from rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates. So we'll do a similar thing to the first one here. So we get x times y. We'll recall that x is equal to r cosine theta and that y is equal to r sine theta. And we'll just substitute these in for x and y. So we get r cosine theta times r sine theta is equal to 1. Regroup these. The r's can combine to form r squared. And then I can rearrange this to put the sine in front. You'll see why in a second. We get sine theta cosine theta. Now this part looks familiar. It's sine theta times cosine theta. It's almost an identity. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. And I can do that as long as I do it to both sides. And then what is 2 sine theta cosine theta? That's the formula for the double angle of a sine. So we get r squared times the sine of 2 theta is equal to 2.